Hello, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Ongaku Do You, the podcast where three friends are come together and break down what's new in the Japanese music industry. This is the podcast for the week of November 8th, 2019. I'm your host, Ken, and with me we have Luna. Hello, everyone. I'm back. Yay. And uh, that's it. <laughs> Just another Dos Compadres episode this time. Gray wouldn't be able to make it this time. His computer has problems, and uh, yeah. So it's just uh, just us today. It is, unfortunately. I'm glad to be back. So good to have you back. So thank you. It's always good to. I always look forward to this. This is we got some great stuff this week. So I am extremely excited. I came in on this week. Yeah, that's for darn sure. Yeah, we have a uh, quite a, a laundry list of news to go through. But yeah, before that, what have we been listening to? Let's start with you. So. I really listened to not much this week. It's been what I've gone to work, you know, whatever I've driven to work in this week, and that's it. So it's been Tomochin, a.k.a. Itano to- uh, Tomomi, who is a former AKB idol. I've listened to her swag album nonstop all week, and it's fantastic. I blind bought it for two songs, Funi and Dear J. Because I really like those two songs. And I'm like, well, I'd really like to have an actual copy of it. So I'm like, I saw the album on eBay really cheap. And I bought it. And that whole album is amazing. And the funny thing is, is Crush is probably now my favorite song by her. Ooh, Crush. I, you know, I have that album. I bought it way back when it first came out. And, and once again, I, I, I bought it for Dear J and Fuini. I had both of those copies originally of those singles but you know Fui Fui is probably my favorite song by her but Crush is a very close second of her older stuff yeah and it's a solid album uh John Padan is also really really good and Swagalicious is a lot of fun I actually just like saying it I think it's a funny sounding thing um (laughs) using that as a verb (laughs) yeah and uh I'm trying to think. I mean, the whole album is solid. Like, what was the other? Bow Wow, I also really liked. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a really, really good album, and it surprised me how much I enjoyed the album as a whole, and that it's still on repeat in my car. Because usually I, you know, I try to switch things out every couple days. But this album's been so good that it's gotten caught in my head and I just kind of can't get some of those songs out of my head. And I'm like, this is a fantastic album and I'm really glad I finally purchased it. So that was, that's really been the main thing I've been listening to. Not much for me. I, I've been sick and other things have been going on. So it's just been music to work and back and that's it. Yeah, I see. I see. I see. So uh, what about you, Ken? What have you been listening to lately? So I've been listening to a hodgepodge of things randomly. I was listening to Imer again. I was listening to a couple things because we're getting to our best of 2019 list. And, you know, Imer is probably on that list for new artists. I haven't narrowed it down yet, but she is probably one of the surprising things of that list. Because before 2019, before this year, I haven't really listened to a lot of her stuff, but... Just everything from her two albums from Penny Rain and Some Dance just surprised the hell out of me. And I've been loving every minute of it. So besides that, I've been listening to Anger Me's Koi, no, Koi Wa Acha Acha Acha. I don't know why that song just randomly popped into my head. So I was like, oh, I should take a listen to this. And, you know, I got... Tenders album also that I've been kind of just going back and forth his EP the Insight EP which is really really good I would highly recommend it a lot of my songs one of those songs is probably going to be on my my top songs for this year and besides that I was listening to Yee Yee Motai Nai's album also you know I've been a huge fan of Yee Yee they're in the same record label as Tender so it's kind of just association of what I've been listening to. And a lot of their songs is fairly acoustic and a fairly, it's fairly chill music. The, the stuff that you can hear in like bars and stuff like that 
it's very very pessimistic though so if you guys are feeling down i wouldn't listen to a lot of yee stuff because it deals with like being alone <laughs> and things like that but you know besides that nothing too much i did pop into my juicy playlist album and was listening to some akb but besides that nothing too much there but yeah with that let's move on to the news here first is going to be our lovely little v youtuber Aski announced that she will be releasing her first album titled without you next week actually or this week by the time you like guys listen to it on november 12th along for the music video for its lead track uso 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 on her official youtube channel like Several of the tracks that's been from are released by Aski. It's produced by Team Scramble, who is actually going by the now known name of TSI. And Ichigo Iguchi is going to be taking producing role from that team. So you can guys can read more info about the album and the music video Uso 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 on our website there so i'm looking forward to it it sounds really really good we've been kind of champing her just in the background just a little bit but you know i'm still new to this whole virtual youtuber thing but it's i am too but it's really interesting and i'm really curious to how this will do and how she'll do i'm rooting for in the back to see how this virtual you know like you to see how the virtual youtubing will be yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But yeah, it'll release with two editions regardless. And yeah, with continuing on to the lovely heavy metal band, The Envoy, announced that they will be releasing a brand new album called The Fallen Crimson next year on February 5th. This will be the latest album done by the group since Atheist Cameo back in May of 2015. Fortunately, not much is known about the album, Except that it'll release with both a, an American release and a European release. So we put both of those links on our site. So if you guys are interested. And we also put the trailer for the for the album on the site if you guys are interested too. Alright, and next up is the Japanese five member dance pop vocal unit Fakey is bringing their fans a new antidote with their latest music video which actually just premiered on October 31st and Halloween of course uh, those of you who don't know Fakey they have a lot of fun unique dance songs and really bring something special to the group and we'll talk a little bit more about them later but antidote is actually the second part in a dance trilogy release with the theme of girl power and that was announced in july um and you can read a little bit more about that dance trilogy on our website as well and you can also check out the music video for antidote which is amazing yeah i was very surprised by watching that music video because you know i've heard of fakey and we'll go more into this a little bit later but you know I was very, very surprised to see them take this certain spin on the reggae genre, so to speak. I was too, actually. And I think a witch who wrote it had a little bit of something maybe to do with it too. However, it they really did a great job. And I like the spin that they did on it. It is a fantastic track and it really brings something unique to the group. So it's so much different than their first one, Girl Gotta Live, which was uh, the first part of that dance trilogy. So it's amazing to see them do, you know, different things with this dance trilogy. And I'm really enjoying it. And I can't wait to see what else, you know, what the next one will be. So I highly recommend you guys checking out Antidote on the site. It's also on iTunes and Spotify as well. And next up... Millie Akato, who is a Japanese urban pop vocalist, songwriter, and fashion designer, is celebrating her 15 years in the music industry and has announced her latest best album entitled MBEST 2, which will be coming out November 27th. MBEST will have 33 of her biggest hits since 2004. And you can read a little bit more about it on the site as we go into some more details on those tracks as there's going to be some new arrangements along with a new song included as well on this album. 
and it will it is set to release in two different editions a two cd regular edition and a two cd plus limited edition as well and one side will be more of an upper side one side will be a ballad side i'm very very excited about this release she is one of those artists i've been following since her first singer uh yozora and or yozora slash never let go because it was a dual a side and it's amazing that she's been in the industry for 15 years and it blows my mind because I feel like it was just yesterday when I first heard her music and seeing how she's come this far I, I'm just so happy for her and celebrating her 15th anniversary is just amazing so check out our article the track listing is on there as well and you can also check out her latest music video Honto no Boku o Shite so I cannot wait for this I already pre-ordered my copy and I am really ecstatic about this. So great way to kick off her anniversary. Oh yeah, no, it it is is a great way. And you know, right before she you know gives new life, so to speak, yeah, it, yes. this this is the perfect way to be like, hey, this is the foothold of my career as of so far. Doesn't mean it's gonna end, but you know, this is chapter one, so to speak, yeah. Um, I would say it's chapter two in a way because mm -hmm. she had a best and best two came out. I'm trying to think how many years ago because that had love forever and it had rainbow on there. I, so I feel like this is kind of like a chapter two that I'm not quite done yet. I'm still mm -hmm. going. Um, but this is showcasing a new part of me as she just got married and had a baby this year. Yeah. So I feel like this is like a second chapter, not only in her life, but her career. Um, I feel like the first chapter was, was, uh, you know, like, Hey, I'm still here. I, you know, these are, this is my encasement of what I've been doing since now. I'm still do doing good. You know, in the second chapter is, Hey, I'm here. I am. I'm uh, so M best one came out in 2011. So it's now 2019 and it's just, you know, seeing, I feel like this is another good chapter in her f career for her. And she's still going. I mean, she's not going anywhere anytime soon. I feel like after this, it'll be a chapter of her as a mother. And I want to see where her music style also will go from here. If it'll stay change or if it'll stay the same, you know, having the life experience she did. It has, you know, it can have an effect on people. And I'm curious. I want to see where she'll go from here. And then when, you know, maybe five so many, five years from now or so she releases another best album it'll be another chapter in her career that we'll get to hear you know that that change in style so no exactly and i i honestly i can't wait to see more I same can't wait. same i she's been one of those artists i followed for so long and everything she's done i've absolutely loved it and i look forward to more but yeah, continuing on up, it is the lovely Korean boy group HTs announced that they will be making their official debut in Japan with their next debut album, Treasure EP Extra Shift the Map, which will be coming out December 4th. You know, they just came out this past year in October and been fairly well received last year over the years and debuting number one on the Korean charts. But, you know, I'm looking a little bit forward to this because finally we'll get to talk more Korean boy bands that aren't BTS. <laughs> yes, I'm looking forward to seeing them as well because there's, there's been several Korean boy bands I really enjoyed their music of. And seeing a new one on the scene who's not you know, I guess you could say a veteran, like Toho Shinki has been a veteran, and we will see them on the charts, and CN Blue, and, you know, groups like that, who've been in industry for so long, seeing a new one come on the board, you know, from Korea, I think is great, and I'm really excited to see what they're going to do. Yeah, I'll release with two editions, which you can check out on the site, along with their official teaser for their track, Utopia, also on the site. Alright, um, Mire Toyama shows us her playlist with her latest EP. She's a Japanese R&B pop vocalist and songwriter, and she is bringing her latest EP, entitled Playlist, 
came out on October 30th, and it's actually her second EP and latest release since her album Answer, which came out in August last year. Um, it comes in two editions, CD only and CD plus DVD. The DVD contains some music videos. You can check out the track list on our website along with the trailer for her EP playlist. It actually showcases all the songs on that EP. And I highly recommend checking her out. Her vocals are amazing. And I absolutely love her. And here's a little interesting fact about her. Is in 2014, when I was in Japan, there was a singer. She just was known as Mide. And I didn't catch her last name when I was at the concert, but it was at a Jasmine concert. It had Jasmine, Little Glee Monster, Yasuda Rei. She was one of them, and this girl had the most amazing vocals. I was like, holy cow, her English was so good because she actually sang an English song. And I was blown away, and I couldn't remember her last name, and there were so many singers named Mide. You know, I'm like, okay, who is she? I want to find out. Years later, I finally found out it's her. It's Mide Toyama. And I saw her in 2014, and she was young. She was really young when I saw her, and I'm like, oh my god, this girl has so much talent. And so, you know, seeing her now and that she's doing still great in her career and she's still singing makes me really happy. I highly recommend you guys checking her out. Rediscovering her, like, meant a lot to me and I'm going to be grabbing all the releases she's done till now. But check out our website. There is a link to get your copy on here and a YouTube video to check out all her songs on Playlist. I think I'll be grabbing this one too because you know what's funny? All the people that you saw in that one act ended up being big hits later on. And you better not tell Gray about this because I'm pretty sure Gray is going to end up being a fan too. <laughs> oh, yeah, she is amazing. And that I wish if I would have drug Gray with me and Kyo that day because they. Was that the concert they went with me, dropped me off? No, this was a different one. One concert I went to see, they went with me and helped me find a venue. This was a different one I went to see. I still have the ticket stub because it was called After School Swag. That was the title of this one. And this was at Club Buenos in Shibuya. But I don't, they didn't come with me this day. But I wish if I would have drugged you guys to go see it with me. Like, hey, you guys are going to see this with me. So, I that's the one thing I wish if I, but I loved it. Like, this was such an amazing concert. And, you know, seeing all these artists, like, I am so glad that I was able to do that. My only regret was I forgot my camera. And they let you bring your camera in and take videos. So, I have a few videos in my cell phone. But, unfortunately, I my cell phone kind of crashed. And they're a little corrupted, so I can't really play them that well. It makes me a little sad, but I still have the memory in my heart and my mind, so. I, I really want to go back and see all these artists. Now they're all big, and I'm really happy for them that they've done so well. Yeah, no. I'll be definitely keeping my eye out a little bit more on this now. But yeah, continuing on off is off off the heels of their latest single, Sayonara Nami Dame, piano vocal unit. Kitiri announced that they will be they're announcing their first major album called T Kitiris next year on January 29th. Fortunately, not much is known about this album except it will include popular tracks, Rashidori and Bujuritsu. And previously released single Sayonara Namidae will be rounding out to 11 tracks So This will release with two editions, a CD standard edition and a vinyl edition. So... Oh, wow. I'm looking forward to that vinyl edition. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, that vinyl edition, oh my god, that'd be, I'm so glad vinyls are coming back. Oh, yes, 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 yes. But yeah, you can check out more information about that on our site, along with the music video for Munji Ritsu on our site also. They are very interesting. Like, I can't put my finger on it, but it's, one person does the piano and one does everything else but both does vocals and it's so interesting to see this out there might be a future music chord i'm not too sure now it won't be next week's one that's for sure but it'll be a future music corner no idea when but it's it's something to keep my mind on for the future there 
I think it, it'll be something to keep all our minds on. So they're very interesting, and I think they'd be a great music corner. Yes, yes, yes. But yeah, speaking of music corners, we have an alumni over here. Yes, so speaking of music corners, actually, so our next one is actually an indie corner veteran, and she is Japanese R&B soul singer, L. I always don't know if I'm saying, I want to say Ely. Yeah, wait, I, I I think we per, we pronounced it Ely and we kind of just kept it. <laughs> I want to say Ely, but sometimes I'm wondering if it's supposed to be said L. It's so, like Eru or something like that. Eru. So, um, but she is coming out with her debut album called Spotlight on November 6th, which actually was two days ago. So, I'm, it's out. Get it. I already ordered my copy. I actually pre-ordered it weeks ago. I have been excited for this because ever since we discussed her on Indie Corner, she has been one of those artists I followed. And her Makuake mini album that released last year was fan-freaking-tastic. And Spotlight, all the songs I've heard off of it so far that have been on YouTube, are amazing. 20 is a magnificent, fun song. I love it. Spotlight is so good. Mm, and uh, Kono Yoru ga Akeru Mare is amazing as well. And she was putting out some of these songs to really promote the album, to lead up to it. And I've been following it, and they're just... I love her so much, and I have never been so excited for one of our artists i cannot wait to see how this does and how she does but you can check out the track listing the music video for spotlight on our website as well and a little tidbit about this is her song 20 was actually used as the theme song for the reality show terrace house but um you you can also get your copy on our website the link's on there order it get it off itunes get it off spotify check her out she is an artist, I think, who deserves some love because she's amazing. I cannot say how much and how excited I am for her right now. So. So that's actually pretty big that it's used for Terrace House. For a show that's, you know, on Netflix, everyone watches it. Everyone knows about it. Everyone that has yep. an interest in Japan at least knows what the terrace house is yep so that's really huge and i'm so happy for her you i know, am too her, her career has boomed in the year and a half since we started covering her and i am so happy to be along for the ride i am too she's one of those artists that i'm so glad we covered because she just she's amazing and i was really glad to see that 20 is the theme for terrace house because it does fit it and you listen to that song and you totally can see why it was chosen and her actual her song succubus the remix of it has actually been very pop uh, or has been very popular in the clubs so i think that's another good thing for her is she's really getting her name out there and oh yeah i really hope she you know i hope people start noticing it you know both east and west because she really deserves it she's amazing yeah, that's that's for darn sure. That is for darn sure. But yeah, continuing on up, it is the lovely up-and-coming female auto group. Carrie Luce revealed that they will be dropping their first debut single on February 11th next year. This is a four-member group that is kind of a hodgepodge of former Empire and Bish groups. And kind of the same veal this is like their junior groups because it, it's from their graduated members you know it's funny I, i've noticed this so bish bish b-i-s b-i-s-h and mm -hmm. empire they're all a hodgepodge of each other they borrowed members that they started from members from one of the other groups and you know that tells you something that you never really leave the system so to speak yep but, you know, like similarly to other idols in that very small circle there, this is also produced by Scrambles, which I am very, very excited to see. I love dealing with Scrambles or TIS is what they're called now. And I would actually want to talk to them because I really want to see how their producing is and how they how they do these certain songs. 
I'd actually be very interested in that as well. And I know we've, we've discussed, you know, Bish and Empire before. So I'm really curious to see, to hear Carrie Loose and their newest single, their first single. I think this will be something really interesting because I feel like Empire, they have some really good songs. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what Carrie Loose does. Yep, that indeed. I, I can't wait. I can't wait, honestly. But yeah, you can check out more information on our site along with the preview of the music video. Also on our site. Alright, next up is Exit, which is a Korean five-girl pop group, announced that they will be releasing their second Japanese single entitled Bad Girl For You. It will be dropping on Christmas, December 25th, right in time for the holiday season. So, I'm excited about this. This is actually their first single, their this their second single in Japan, and the first single after their debut album, Trouble. And this song is actually produced by DJ Taku Takahashi of the infamous M-Flow. So, I am ecstatic about that, and it's also written by Ely. <laughs> It's, so, yes. so this is just made for us. Just me and you, huh, Luna? <laughs> yes, it is. So when I saw that, this got me really excited. And I already like Exit. I really enjoy their Korean music. And I really like their Japanese stuff as well. So this got me even more pumped for the single just because of the... I mean, DJ Ta- you got DJ Taku. And you got Ely, who is fantastic. And you got Exit, who... They got some great dance moves, they got good vocals, they got catchy tunes. This this is one I'm actually really, really hyped for. And it will be coming in three editions. It'll be coming in two limited editions, a Type A and a Type B, and a CD-only regular edition as well. Type B comes with the DVD feature in our 2019 Japan tour. Type A comes with the music video and making a Bad Girl For You. Um, You can check out a little bit more information about the releases on our site because it involves trading cards. So if you guys are into collecting all those, check out that along with the pre-order links. Because if you want those trading cards, you better pre-order your copy because I can tell you those go fast and people love to collect those. Um, Also with the release of this newest single, they actually did a pop-up shop at the Shibuya 109 store in Tokyo for a limited time. Unfortunately, it was only from November 2nd to the 4th, so it already passed. But it was to come right their newest single, Bad Girl For You. So hopefully there will be another pop-up shop, so you guys will have to keep a lookout for it. You can also check out the track listing for the album on the site as well. Yeah, I'm very, very excited, though. I'm so excited. <laughs> kind of want to get I this I am, out. too. And finally, for release news, popular three-member pop rock group Ikimono Gakkeri announced that they will be dropping a brand new album, We Do, also on the lovely, lovely holiday season of December 25th. This will be kicking off the group's 20th anniversary and will be their latest album since Fun Fun Fanfare back in 2014. Ironically, the planning for this album went went back as far as November of last year and will be dropping with 13 tracks total. This will release will also include latest release Sing and Starlight Journey, which was very interesting as it will release with two editions, a single CD only standard edition and a two disc limited edition, which will include a live audio rip of their latest fan fail tour back in May in Zip Diver, Tokyo City. If you guys are interested, they will be also holding a brand new 2020 live tour show, which you can check out more information on our site. You can pre-order everything on the site also. I'm excited about this because I love Ikimonogakari, and I'm so glad they're back because it's been a little too long. Yep, that is for darn sure. But yeah, we only have one regular news here and that is is that nogizaka 46 will be dropping their second documentary titled itsunamika kono iru documentary of nogizaka 46 also on christmas day this will be the second one after their first documentary back in 2015 and will actually follow 
gradu- the graduation of Nanase Nishino, and we'll fe- have fellow interviews and about regarding her graduation. We'll release with a, a very very abundant editions here. You'll have a two disc DVD or Blu-ray edition, or a four disc DVD and bl- Blu-ray co- complete edition, which you can pre-order on the site. That's crazy. That is like four disc Blu-ray edition. Wow. Well, I'm pretty sure because it's going to include like the tours and stuff like that too. But... Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, that that's still actually really really cool that they're doing that. So great great uh item for all the fans yeah i mean i they're gonna have kaiti michiwa they they, they got it because that 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 that's the song that she graduated with so but yeah with that let's move on to the music corner here and this week it is your turn luna so why don't you go ahead and take the reins this week's music corner is fakey who we actually just talked about earlier with Antidote. So they are a Japanese five-member pop, dance, and vocal unit under the Avix track sublabel Rhythm Zone. Uh, some interesting information. They actually got their start in 2013 on YouTube with their debut track, Better Without You. And uh, this track was actually released strictly on YouTube in 2013. That's And that's something really unique that they did is they just put out some stuff on YouTube before they actually started releasing songs digitally in January of 2014. So their first uh, digital mini album actually dropped that year. And then in 2015, they actually revamped their style and sound and introduced a new member to the group. Currently, there are the five members are Mikako, Taki, Akina, Lil Fang, and Hina. They utilize their bilingual skills in many of their songs and they have the perfect mixture and flow of Japanese and English and you can hear that in every single song they can flow back and forth with ease and perfectly and that's one of the things I really really like about them and I do know that Akina is bilingual for sure Um, and it's like amazing to see the members they have just because they all have these different styles, and I think that's one of the unique things that really makes, or one of the things that makes Fake unique is each of their members is, you know, brings a different flavor to the group. So that's something I really, really love about them. Um, so, and... I guess I would describe them as something fun and fresh, like, you know, in the Japanese pop scene, because they, in each of their songs, it's different. So whether it be like style or vocals, for example, their song Candy is a really, really fun, enjoyable style. It has a really, like, at first when you hear it, you hear this trumpet in there, and it has some really great beats that start, it's like a fun dance party tune. And their vocals really show in it. The video is a little wacky because you see these animated characters dancing with them. But their choreography themselves in the video is really good. And that is one of the songs that introduced me to them was Candy. Is I was on YouTube and I'm like, oh, what is this video? And I watched it. I'm like, this is amazing. These girls got some major talent. Their vocals are fantastic. Their mixture of Japanese and English is so good in flows. I just loved it. And in like, for example, their debut song, Better Off Without You, is a com- better, uh, better Without You is a completely different type of song than Candy. And that was actually their debut song. And it's a very heavy dance song, which utilizes e- EDM and Eurobeat in it. And it has really great vocals and a super catchy chorus. But there's such a different type of style than Candy. And it's amazing seeing their debut song and you go through their other music and hear all the different styles. Like in their song uh, Sugar Sweet, it's this really cute, sweet R&B pop tune that has this beautiful flow. And it's it has a sugary pop, sugary R&B mix to it. And it reminds you of those really cute girl groups that you really enjoy their songs. And I love the composition to it and their vocal capabilities really showcase in the song. And the music video is really nice and relaxing. I love it. It is such a 
different song. And I remember watching Candy, then watching Sugar Sweet right after thinking, is this the same group? And you can tell by their vocals it definitely is, but just the style and change of the songs and what they do with it is amazing. And then you hear their newest song, Antidote, which is reggae, which is freaking reggae. And it is so good. So you see these girls take on all these different styles and knock it out of the park each time. And I also love that over time, you currently, you watch them grow as well. You see that early on, they, they, you know, their dancing was good, but it wasn't like fantastic. Now their choreography and dancing is amazing. And these girls, you can tell, have really worked on it. And just their vocal capabilities and how they've honed them to be what they are and what they can do. I just, one of the reasons, another reasons why I love them so much. Um, they currently have two digital mini albums, the one in Candy, one physical mini album entitled Unwrapped, one physical single called Four, a live digital album, and 24 digital singles. You can follow them, you can follow them on their official website, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube when you check out our site. You can also watch Antidote on the website as well. I highly, highly recommend checking these girls out and checking out their YouTube page. They also just put a really fun documentary up on Halloween and they were all dressed up as uh, in costume on it. And they were talking about their new video, Antidote, on there. And they're talking about themselves. And it's really, really cute. And it's a really neat way to get to know the girls so I really liked watching it and Akina dressed up as Laura Croft, which I thought was really cool. She pulled it off really well. All the girls look great in costumes um, and they seem like the, they seem really sweet and I'd love to meet them. Uh, what did you think of them, Ken? So just wow. <laughs> you know, that's that's one word that comes to mind when watching them, you know. I kept track with them over the last couple months and like you listening to one song and going to another song I didn't know if they were the same group or not their genre switching is so interesting and it might be jarring for some people that might be like oh you know I like this certain style why don't you guys always sing this style I mean that's good but you you guys want to have that variety of life because then it once they finally nail down a tone so to speak then everything can jive perfectly of what they they could have done or oh i wish they did it this way or something like that but you can always just go back to listen to certain songs that they did do a certain genre that way but you know with them they're they're, well, A, their dancing got immediately better over the last couple months from what I've been watching. And their genre switching is so amazing. I I love it to death. You know, Antidote is a really, really good song. I did like, um, what was it? I did like Candy, but the, their dancing from Candy was so much different also. I did like, what was it? Girls Gotta Live. Girls Gotta Live was probably one of my favorite songs by them. Very up, uppy, dancey stuff that I just love in a girls group. And not trying to be bubbly pop. It's just straight vocal power, which I just love. Yep. I think that's kind of what turned me on to them is their powerful vocals and they don't let their dancing slow them down. Nope, 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 nope. It's it's something that I'm going to keep my eye on just a little bit more now. But thank you for this introduction more so because I I kind of knew who they were. I just at a glance I knew who they were, but I want to kind of see how Gray takes to it because I remember us talking to him about it that he only he only was introduced to them by one song and he didn't really like them so i want to see how he likes the different genres it could be just one song that he just didn't like yeah and they switch so you know and all their big songs they switch so much like better off without you 
compared to candy, compared to like sugar sweet and girls gotta live. Like they all have this different style and vibe to them. And I feel like they're a group you can't judge by just one song because it doesn't, it doesn't show what the group really is. I feel like they're a group you need to listen to different songs because you'll find one you at least like. There's someone who they really surprise you with what they bring and that's what I, I think that's one of the things that makes them unique and stand out from other groups and also re made me remember them. Plus, their candy video always stuck out because of those drawings in it. And that trumpet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those drawings, I'm like, you know what's funny is, I was like, oh, those drawings draw, uh, dance better than the girls do in this music yeah. video. But then you just go from there to Girls Gotta Live or Antidote. There, It seems like night and day from what they were. Yeah, and it could have been they just it could have been the choreographer too, but at least Antidote and Girls Got to Live really show off their amazing dancing skills, and that you know that's the other thing. And their songs are also very catchy. I think that's the other reason. Now I got Candy stuck in my head because that chorus is super catchy. It has this beat to it that really gets stuck in your head. So, and they also do have several English songs on iTunes. So you can actually find all their songs on iTunes US, as well as Japan, and they're on Spotify too. So I highly recommend people giving them a chance and checking out their songs. They were releasing in the UK for a little bit back in the day. So I would definitely give them a listen. I think they go, you know, really well with that mixture of um, East and West. They pull it off well, and they've also been doing a lot of conventions lately. They did one in Canada recently, and they also did one in Brazil. So mm. I'm, it's either Brazil or Chile. I think it's Brazil. But they, they've they been really expanding, and it makes me happy to see that, and that they got fans all over the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, once again, thank you so much for doing a little bit more of a in-depth look at what they are. And I'm I'm so happy that you introduced this group a little bit more to me. And once again, I would love to see Gray's reaction, so to speak, because they also too. they're also signed to Avex, and he kind of is a bias towards Avex also. I would so. too. I'd like to see that he takes to some of their other songs. Well, we'll see in a couple weeks because we'll be doing our music corner podcast round two because. Starting next week, we all reach 20 artists that we have done for Music Corner. Surprisingly. <laughs> we've done good. We've gotten a lot of artists that we've all got to experience. And I really enjoy doing those Music Corner podcasts. Because then it makes you revisit all the artists on there. And also really think about... Not just the ones you picked, but the ones, you know, like you and Gray picked, for example. You guys pick some great artists and it makes us all revisit and think. And you got me into a lot of the artists that I've been supporting. So I feel like doing these music corners expands our horizons. Oh, and, and gets definitely. us to discover new artists we might not give a chance to, or we might just slip under our radar. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Like I said, there's there's groups that I, that both either you or Gray weren't on when we started doing these that I would love to see your guys' reactions. Like, for example, I would love to see Gray's reaction for I Don't Like Mondays because he wasn't on that episode. Yeah. <laughs> and I would love to see your guys' reaction to Frederick's because you guys, both of you guys weren't on that episode. We weren't, and I actually am going to check out Frederick's again because I listened to one of their songs, but I feel like I need to re-listen. So I'm excited about going back through and rechecking, you know, all these artists out and also to see if there's anything new they put out since then. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, just look forward to that in the future. We'll be slowly giving more details out. I don't want to give a hard date on it, but just look out for that in the future. But yeah, with that, let's move on to the Oricon and... So there are some surprising news here that I've noticed. Yes, very surprising. And the first one is number 10. <laughs> Ironically, it is Turning Up by Odyssey. 
So, not only am I surprised that it's number 10, I'm surprised on why it showed up on the list. And that's because it showed up on the list for downloading and streaming. So, if you guys haven't noticed, within the last week or two, Arashi has been slowly but surely opening the floodgates to SNS, to social media, for these members. I am shocked first of all but i am also excited some people still can't believe that they did this i don't know why johnny's thought of this now i'm kind of thinking because of the 2020 olympics yeah i i'm i want to say that's probably going to be a hand in it because i'm pretty sure odyssey is going to be somehow some way in that opening ceremony oh yeah they've because... been a big um inspiration and a big part uh in the japanese industry for so long yeah they are a major pillar in this industry yes so i would not be surprised somehow some way they are involved in the opening ceremonies or in the olympics in some way i know show sakurai show he's going to be broadcasting because he always does this he does this every year or every olympic year he goes to the olympics and he does the broadcasting for the japanese side so it what what an honor for him to at least be a part of the opening ceremony this time around mm -hmm. if yep. he can be i hope he can yeah so you know this song is my number one song of the week and it's number 10 um i'm with you on that as soon as i heard the song i was blown out of the water and i actually messaged you right away saying i love the song it is amazing it's catchy it's fun the video, I love the video because I thought it was really cute. And it looks like they filmed it in L.A. Oh, yeah, they did. They did. And it's just such a catchy, upbeat song. This it is... It makes you want to get up and dance. Yeah, this... You know, this is why I love... Particularly, I love Odyssey because they can do these types of songs. And it just clicks. It just works. It, it was just perfect. Works. It works and perfectly. And their dancing in that video, their choreography was so good. I love their dance when they're in the street dancing. I'm like, oh my god, this is just perfect. Everything fits so well with it. So you know what's funny? This song, so the timing of the charts that we've done goes all the way up to the third. This song was released on the third and made the top ten already. So give it a full week of just having full explo exposure for music videos, download, and streaming. You can download this song on American iTunes. Something I never thought I would say for Arashi. I've been getting them digitally from the Japanese stuff for the longest time. And buying them physically and all that stuff. But them going to the switch of digital, it, it surprises me. And... I I have no idea how to react to this. <laughs> yeah, and I'm actually going to be buying this off iTunes US to support them. Yes. I, the song is amazing, and I'm giving them all my support because you can actually get it on US iTunes. Yeah. I buy their albums physically because it's, you know, they're one of those companies that, you know, you, you buy them physically. You can't get them digitally. And the song, I want right away, and I'm not waiting. You know, I don't even know if they'll have a physical release for this song. They th they might not, and maybe it'll be on an album later, but yeah. we don't know that. So this is one that I'm not missing out on. It's that good. Yeah. And I don't buy digitally often. Yeah. You know, if this is going to be how they, you know, go into their hiatus with a bang, their last song was amazing also. And, you know, turning up was just everything that I just love about Arashi. And I can't wait. And it's been a while for me to say that. You know, I, I, I love Arashi to the, to the core. They're probably, they're the biggest reason why my Japanese got to the point that it was. I owe a lot to them by watching all those variety shows. And this is their best song that I've heard in a long time from them. And if they're going to go out hit after hit with their hiatus with this it's gonna be bittersweet because i know when they go on hiatus that last song of theirs is probably gonna be hoping gonna be one of their best but oh i'm sure it will 
yeah, regardless, day one on the charts on Oricon. Number 10, turning up. So, uh, go, got a majority, 11,580 points. And going on up, it is Shukume by Official Higedondism. This is no lie. They ruled the charts this week with three songs. And I'm going to spoil that right there. And nothing more we can say it's a it's a really good song like the trumpets and all all that lovely stuff too yep yeah we said enough about it it's a great song i yeah. don't know what else else i can say and it doesn't i'm not disappointed i bought their album traveler it's yeah. just you know they're still hitting it out of the ballpark yep yep that's for darn sure yeah and shukume sold a wonderful 12,541 points and going on up it's yesterday by official Hige Dandism. still good you know love it love it love it not much more we can say nope. this week it sold a lovely 14,027 points and going on up it is Umatoshika by Yuneza Kenshi see once again you know I wanted to have this debate last week but your card died <laughs> and i wanted to yeah. have that have that debate this week but gray's computer died i know it was last week was a crappy week i was deathly sick and i got finally got better and trudged into work on wednesday and then friday freaking morning i go to start my car for work my car was dead like the battery would not start and i'm sitting there like this like trying to start my car call my boss and say hey i need a ride to work and then that night, I was getting my car fixed, so I missed the podcast because my car was dead. We finally jumped it, and I had to get it in right away to get a new battery. That was lovely. Now Gray has his computer die, and he's at Best Buy getting it fixed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but I, I want to have this debate. Yeah, I want to have this debate of who's going to take number one. I'm calling it, I'm saying official he gay, then Kenshi, and then maybe I'm young. Maybe. I'm gonna but go, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm still gonna unofficial. Go, I'm gonna go Kenshi. Kenshi, he only released two songs, and all both of those songs were on the charts for many, many weeks. But official has been doing it all three within the last six months, though. Yeah. Now we'll we'll have this debate soon enough. <laughs> we will. And I keep flip flopping, but I keep seeing official on there, and they have three songs still on the charts. So it's it's really a hard call. Yeah, it's it's really a hard call. You got you got the workhorse who's been doing it for one song over the course of how many months and you got the newcomers with just three songs that's been on the charts constantly. But it'll be interesting. I can't wait till that end of the year list comes out and I'll be darn surprised to see who wins. Mm-hmm. Same. But regardless, Uma Toshika sold a lovely 14,282 points. And going on up, it is Konani Suki ni Nachate Ino by Hinata Zaka 46. Great song. Still love it. Nothing more I can say here. I'm very, very surprised. Yup. It's still on here for quite a long while, too. So, about a month, so that's good for them. I'm, I'm very happy. This song's been a phenomenal song. Agreed. But yeah, it sold a lovely 14,798 points. And going on up, it is Pretenders by Official Hige Dondism. Close to seven months now, I want to say. Seven or eight months on the chart continuously. It probably yeah. only, only wasn't on the charts for like maybe three to four weeks, I want to say. But, you know, Pretenders is a mother beast. Oh, and, yeah, it is. And this week it sold 21,841 points. And going on up, finally another new song here. It is Further Away Slash Destiny by Addiction. So this is their major label debut. And, you know... <laughs> I don't know what to say to this. It They played it safe, and I liked it, but I wouldn't be like... I, I wouldn't be the kind of guy that would be like, I'm going to go again, go ahead and buy it immediately, so to speak. Yeah, it's like I I enjoyed 
both songs and I do agree with they they played it safe and I completely understand you know debut single uh play it safe it's not something I'm gonna go out and buy immediately either but I really enjoyed it I liked that they did two different types of songs you know a more relaxing nice song and further away while you got a really heavy dance song in destiny yeah and I like that differentiation. Um, they also remind me of a little bit of a K-pop vibe. However, they don't fully have that full K-pop vibe, which is why I think I enjoyed it. They yeah. did a really good combination. And we're, you know, bringing something a little different to the table. Um, but I, I thought it was a really solid single. Yeah, well, we'll see. I'm... I, like I said, I'm not going to judge it right away because I give a group at least three singles before I decide it, that I'm going to go after them or not, so to speak. And I am curious what they're going to do next, especially yeah. since this is a double A side. And I yeah. would like to see where they go from here, especially a debut single doesn't define the artist. Like you said, yeah. you know, they could just be getting into their groove. Yeah. And we'll get more on that next week. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> but... You know, th it, it's a pretty decent single. They're not going to... This this is pretty much the introduction to the masses saying this is who we are kind of thing. Once again, I would rather have like a debut album to do that more perfectly compared mm -hmm. to a single because then you run into that trap of, oh, they only do this kind of music oh, compared yeah. to the album where they have a little more freedom to be like, no, we do a little bit of this, but a little bit of that, but we majorly do this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. But, you know, this doing a double ace, I can do that also, because Destiny was pretty pretty further away from further away, so to speak. Oh, yeah. But regardless, further away in Destiny sold a lovely 24,137 points. And going on up, it is Kokoro Magic A to Z by Aquars. Mm. They've done better songs. This is less... I, I'm not going to be like... I hate it, or I love it. It's just like, it's there. The Arabian Nights composition yeah. is the only thing I remember from this song. Everything else is kind of just like, meh. Yeah, same. I felt the same exact way with this one. And I was kind of like, it's just there. Yeah, it's just, it's just there kind of thing. But, you know... <laughs> They, they, they've, done, they've done better songs. I, I know that for a, for a fact. And eh, it's, it's, this is kind of disappointing because their, their last song was really good. But regardless, it sold 24,563 points. And going on up, it is really by Yuji Imaichi. So if you guys don't know who he is, he is the leader of Sandame J Soul Brothers. And by God, you know, this song, his vocals are on point. The composition was really good. But I I don't know what happened because it feels like something is missing from this song. It feels like it's 90% there and that 10% is the 10% that makes it click. I feel the same way, so I really like you know the J sediment soul brothers i love them i think he has great vocals the you know i agree with the composition and i wanted to like this song like i tried to like the song so much there was just that something that kept throwing me off and i just couldn't fake i just couldn't get into it and it disappointed me because i really 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 like him so for me i was like i couldn't pinpoint what to me was didn't catch me yeah no i i have no idea i have no idea and it's it's disappointing because i know that he he's an amazing vocalist i know he has it in him hit a lot of their songs are amazingly sung by him but this song it it was great but it, if that 10 percent that made it click was missing and i don't know what what happened mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's what I felt like to me. There was just something in there that was missing, and I couldn't pinpoint it. And I was very disappointed because I'm like, man, I really, really want to like this. And I can't seem I can't. there's something in it that's not doing it for me. And I can't yeah. figure out what it is. 
Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. You know, this is his debut major song, so I, this is his solo project song. So I'll, I'll give him the pass, and uh, like I said, I'll give him a little bit more songs to kind of judge his style on. But mm, I, I don't know. It that that ten percent is that click that I just needed, and it's, it's gone. I, I have no idea. But regardless, really sold a lovely thirty thousand six hundred and sixty-two points. And going on up to number one, Zuduyo Zuduyo Zuduyne by Equal Loves. And by God, if Adashi was not on this list, this would have been number one for me. It is an emotionally driven song. This is great. This is everything that I want in a in a tra- in an idol group that needs to be. If they're gonna play by the books and play it safe. This is the type of songs you guys need to sing. You can't be all bubbly and high pitch and high energy. You have to have that emotion to it, and that's what Equal Loves does with this song. I agree, cause this song. So I loved it, and I know Equal Love has always been hit or miss for me, but I absolutely loved this song. I thought it was fanful, fantastic, and this was my second favorite song of the week as well. Like, as soon as I heard it come on, I'm like, this is so good. And it was very emotional as well. What's amazing is this is produced by Sashi Hararino, formerly of AKB, the number one star. And, you know, she took on Equal Love as her project anyway. But the fact that this song is produced by her makes it feel like she learned something from AKB. And Mm -hmm. this was it. And it needed that touch. Yep. And what better to know how to write and produce it in a number one idol hit song than the person that was that number one idol hit? So you know, I, I, I would love to see more by them, but yeah, like this, like you said earlier, Luna, they are hit or miss. So we'll see. But this this song was amazing, and if Odyssey was not on here, this would have been number one also for me. Yep, this was a great song, and this came in a close second. Regardless, Zurui yo, Zurui ne. So they lovely. 145,542 points. And since we have some time, let's go click over to the albums here. Oh, oh, flip side. That's That's something I haven't seen in a while. Infinity Synthesis 5 by flip side. Round wow. out number 10. Monster X with their 7 mini album. This is probably their Korean stuff right there. Number 9. Coming at you. Dropping down to number 8. Girls 2 with Koisudu Kamo. Ooh, I gotta avoid that for a bit. Uh, Travelers for Official Hige Dandism. Bumped down to number 6. And Kochikotsu Katsu by Zuto Yonaka Made. <laughs> You're not gonna demo e. <laughs> uh, that this that that is translated horribly. Uh, took number five, and Kimito Boku no Himitsu Shochu by Ruto. I think that's a Vocaloid. I'm not too sure. Uh, number three, r- the ride by Rampage of Exile Tribe. Took number three, and Ah Osaka Night Dreaming by Donata Himbotsu. It's the character projects for that one anime. By Dreamer's Night, I believe. Um, and taking up number one, it is Paradise by Hey Say Jump. Par- parade. Uh, parade. I'm, I can't read either. <laughs> mm, but yeah. It's a pretty solid week for albums, actually. Um, I really wanted that Rampage album, but I just didn't have the money to shell out. Oh, yeah. No, no. I've, it's pretty good regardless. And seeing Fripside on there, that makes me happy that they're still doing good. I'm excited to see albums for next week, and I have a feeling you know why. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. Well, for Flipside, you know, you know the 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 lady for the female singer for this for Flipside, she's a prominent seiyu, so it's good to see her still doing her her singing work compared to her seiyu work. Yeah. So that's good to see. Good to see here. But yeah, you know, I want to thank you for listening to this week's episode. You can find us at all the lovely social media sites at Twitter and Instagram at Ongakadu. You can find us 
the site at ongakadu.com. You can find our two affiliates, Claire U Hunter. He is our Japanese live-in mailbox that returned to the U.S. He's been streaming a lot of horror games as of late, although the very spooky month of November is very amazing, right? <laughs> Yes, I agree. And you can find him at twitch.tv slash Hunter K-Y-O-R-Y-U-H-U-N-T-E-R. And you can also find him on Twitter at Koksai Koryu, which is K-O-K-U-S-A-I-K-Y-O-R-Y-U on Twitter. And you can also follow our other affiliate, TimberTaff. He is a Twitch streamer in his own right. And you can follow him at twitch.tv slash TimberTaft T-I-M-B-E-R-T-A-F-T You can also find him on Twitter at TimberTaft uh, on Twitter at same spelling as his Twitch. You can find me on Twitter at O-T-Y-Ken1 You can find Gray at Ongaku Gray. You can find Renford at Renford D And where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at LunaMarie87 and Letterbox you can find me on there as well and my anime list and you can find me on Instagram at NerdyCollectorLuna Yeah, once again I want to thank you guys very much for listening to this week's episode of Ongaku to You I want to say thank you very much and have a great day. Aloha I want to say thank you for listening to today's episode Hope you enjoyed it and we will see you next week. Ciao, matane.